The key to keeping a thriving reef aquarium is to really strive to offer the best environment possible for your animals. Once upon a time we used to aim to have our animals survive, but those days are really over. What we do now is aim to have animals that thrive. The basis of a healthy captive reef ecosystem is water quality. And this really highlights the importance of accurate testing and the use of a logbook. Now a logbook is really beneficial because it's gonna help you monitor past trends and predict future patterns. Remember, close enough isn't good enough. If your water quality is not quite right, over time your aquarium will be not quite right. If you wanna keep a fish only aquarium, your temperature should be 25 degrees, your pH should be 8.4, your KH should be 8 dKH, your ammonia should be zero and your nitrite should be zero. And most important is the salt level. If you're gonna run a fish only aquarium, you tend to run a low salt level of about 1.020. Remember that it's important to keep a stable environment in your aquarium because fish really can't handle changes in the salt level. When you're getting new fish, it's better to introduce fish at a low salt level, which can be raised over time. If you want a reef aquarium with colorful corals, you'll need to test to ensure that your parameters are temperature, 25 degrees, salinity, 1.024, pH 8.4, KH 8 dKH, ammonia 0, nitrite 0, nitrate below 0.5, phosphate below 0.05, calcium 450 and magnesium 1200. You may also choose to test strontium, iodine, potassium and iron, which may all affect the colours of your corals. If you want a reef aquarium with corals that grow, your temperature should be 25 degrees, your salinity should be 1.024, your pH 8.4, your KH 10 degrees KH, ammonia 0, nitrite 0, nitrate below 1 and phosphate below 1, calcium 450 and magnesium 1300. In order to maintain these parameters, you must have good filtration, accurate test kits, and use quality, clean fish foods. All fresh water for top-ups and fresh water that you use to make up salt water for water changes should be made with RO water to avoid any impurities in tap water. If you are gonna use tap water, I'd recommend you use Ultimate Aquacare's D-Claw, which removes chlorine but also chelates heavy metals. The difference in the qualities of salt available to use in your aquarium are amazing. A high quality salt mixed up in RO water will deliver the best results for your aquarium because it cannot contain impurities, parasites or pollution possible in natural seawater. When doing a water change we must aim to get the best quality water in and the worst quality out. Therefore a gravel siphon should be used at all times. I do believe that small regular water changes are better than large irregular changes. 25% per month is a good guide for most people, but you will form your own views. The more fish you have in the tank means the more often you're going to have to change your water. If you wish to keep a thriving reef aquarium full of corals, you need to remember that these corals are using various elements out of the water, such as calcium, magnesium, strontium, iodide, so they're all being used by the corals. So referring to our logbook, we do need to create a routine to ensure that these elements are put back into the aquarium on a weekly basis, especially on the weeks that you don't do a water change. The quality of the trace element supplements you use is as important as the quality of your salt, so use the best available. Aiming to have an aquarium that survives is just not good enough anymore. We're aiming to have aquariums that thrive. So use the best available and your aquarium will reward you and love you for it.